in this episode of Art Law, Public Art with Sarah Morris. The, the moment that is quite interesting is actually picturing and coming up with the renderings and um, coming up with the concept of where, how an artwork can occupy public space. Selections from the MIA Animation Conference and Festival. We explore SPF Fort Lauderdale. To create an environment where these printmakers could meet each other, could meet their audience, and everybody could find out more about what printmaking actually is. It's all ahead on Art Law. Funding for Art Law is made possible by Friends of Art and Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. This project is sponsored in part by the State of Florida, Department of State, Division of Cultural Affairs, and the Florida Council on Arts and Culture. Hi, my name is Jumani Anomaly from SPF Fort Lauderdale. This is right here. This is Art Law. Hi, welcome to Fat Village, this year's host of the SPF Fort Lauderdale. Now, we're not talking about sunscreen and stuff like that. We're talking about artists, printmakers, publishers. We got so much going on here. It's bustling behind me. Come take a look with me. Let's go. SPF for Lauderdale has been amazing. I swear, South Florida has the best situations for artists out here. Well, next though, I'm gonna introduce you to Sarah Morris. She just did an epic piece that's part of the Broward County's Public Art and Design Initiative. Let's check it out. Doing a, an artwork in a public place, the passerby on the moving walkway, either coming from a destination or going off to a destination, becomes part of the artwork. They become part of the piece, whether they like it or not. My name is Sarah Morris, and I'm an artist. I live in New York, and um, I just completed a site-specific piece at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. Broward County has a public art program and we put artwork in our airport, our seaport, our libraries and our parks, any public building. We don't want our buildings to be sterile places uh, that aren't people friendly. And we want people in Broward County, whether they're visitors or residents, 
to be stimulated by the environment. When we put out the call to artists for this project, I immediately thought of Sarah's work. I had seen it in the London Underground, and I just love the paradox uh, that was created between the, the movement, and there's a certain calm in her work, too. Airports, to me, are part of this in-between space where you're not one place, nor are you another place. And I think this is, can be said, this is quite parallel to the role of the artist, where you're going or where you're coming from. The English title would be Center of Formation, and the um, Portuguese title would be uh, Centro de Formacion. It means center of formation or learning center. Well, our project managers work closely with the artist right from the beginning, and they'll help develop the project. In this case, we had discussions with Sarah Morris uh, about frames. It was a very memorable discussion uh, for me, in which Sarah said she didn't want there to be the appearance of frames around the artwork. That was interesting for us because it gave us an idea as to how she thought. But artists quite often, like Sarah, are pushing the envelope, that they're asking our architects and our contractors to do something a little outside of the box. And quite often they're pretty pleased to do that and excited that they've been able to work collaboratively with an artist to overcome an issue or, or even a problem sometimes. The part that was really interesting for me is thinking about this corridor, I think they call it moving walkways. There's two escalators, so there's two walls because there's two escalators and then there's a break in it and then there's beautiful light that comes in from the north. To me, imagining the artwork in the space and conceiving of the artwork in the space, that's the sort of most magical moment. It's not actually the installation. Although, of course, I love the, you know, the end result being to seeing the work, but the, the moment that is quite interesting is actually picturing and coming up with the renderings and um, coming up with the concept of where, how an artwork can occupy public space. The truth is, is at the beginning, it was supposed to be a painting. Um, I had proposed it as a wall painting, and then we realized the sheer amount of travelers to the airport. We realized that the best piece for the longevity of the artwork would be porcelain. I have worked in porcelain before. It's unusual for me. I mean, it's only a few times that I've done it, and I really enjoy trying to get my vision in this other material. It's really interesting because it's very difficult to do, yeah, because it involves an alchemy of baking and creating this color with heat and also having it uh, last up to the element. To me, the context, the location, the politics involved is, is equally important, but color nevertheless, it, it has to be right and it influences so much. So. Uh, we, we struggled for a long time with the color. Yeah, we, I mean, I think it was probably equal time to actually just get the color set and our references all agreed upon as it did to actually make the piece. So, you know, probably all in all, it was over a year. It's about transformation to another place. I'd like each person to walk away with something different. As Sarah would say, each person is going to experience this artwork whether they know that they're experiencing it or not. They're in the environment, so something different is happening. In fact, I've been in the airport and I've seen how people in the space are reacting. Sometimes they lift their head up when they've been looking at their telephone. Uh, they're noticing something is different and they're moving at the same time because they might be on this moving horizontal escalator. It's a very unusual experience to have artwork to your right, to have airplanes out, out the window and it becomes very immersive and I hope people will notice that at the same time I, I hope maybe they won't notice it and they'll just enjoy being in the airport enjoy the wonderful artwork that that's been created for their pleasure. What my grandmother meant to say was, I glow, I am luminous, I flare in the sky, a light gleaming in the Sierra Maestra at night, I am the mountains, I sway the sun to rise, yearning, I dance, I taste of salt, 
My fingers cannot sit still. I smuggled tears. From smile to smile, I ran. When I was too tired to run, I swam. Love reached beyond borders. I swam, I rose, I flew, I dreamed. I fell in love with little to no belonging. I belonged to nowhere and no one. I was in love with everywhere and everyone. I was hungry, cold. I hated hunger and cold. I hated everywhere with no food. I hated everyone with everything. It was different then. I was stupid. I was a woman. I was waiting to become more than what happened, more than a bird fleeing my country to bathe and being afar, more than a landscape or an image to cast a shadow on, a clip in a newspaper, more than seductress or a magician of visions to foretell. My children, riding on the wings of my sacrifice, I left them, I turned back many times, I almost became the devil they wanted, but I left a devil nonetheless. I was a woman ahead of her time. I shimmer in scars, mapped by our bloodlines of living. I imagine more than broken families I come from. The laughter of aspiring lovers, the lure of trembling in another's arms. What about what I wanted? Who listens for what goes untold? I could not protect my children from everywhere. I made offerings to the spirits who attend. I am their mother. I am not God. I was a candela. I was a witch they could not burn, la fuega. I was their mother. I was not God. I made choices. I made peace. I was a woman ahead of her time. I am the road you took here. I am la camina. I was the way. All right, well, I'm here with Ingrid Shindahl. She is the owner director of IS Project and she is the major reason why this is happening here, this F SPF Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, so this is a fair that we put together to try to uh, bring together the print community in South Florida. Uh, when I moved here a few years ago, I noticed that there were a bunch of printmakers here, but none of them knew each other. And nobody really knew about the printmakers that were here. So we wanted to use this opportunity to create an environment where these printmakers could meet each other, could meet their audience, and everybody could find out more about what printmaking actually is. Uh, this is actually my third year using a steamroller to do a printing event like this. Nice. So we have these like large scale blocks and we ink them up with our uh, big relief ink, like all old school style, yeah. and then we uh, run them over with the steamroller. It's, it's the spectacle aspect of the fair. Nice. I'm just like it all because I've seen <laughs> you kind of go over the situation and that's yeah. just that's amazing. Maybe one day you'll just line them all up down the street and just... That would be nice. Just have it like a... Knock out the whole endless. edition in the drive. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. That would be a lot of inking, but it would be a lot of fun for well, sure. We're having a great time at SPF. Yeah. Out of there. I'm glad, you know, you, we're here and you're experiencing this. This is great. I'm glad you guys could make it out, man. This is what it's all about. It's having um, people come out and see that this is a thing that's alive. It's right. here. It's in Fort Lauderdale. And people are doing it. Well, thank you, Ingrid. Yeah. You're awesome. High five. Get Thanks some so much. Hand, make it look like I'm yeah, right? Get some on your face. Peace, y'all. Let's go. <laughs> Enjoy the show. All right. Thank Thanks. You. I'm Lisa C. I'm the author of The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane. No coincidence, no story, my ama recites. And that seems to settle everything, as it usually does, after First Brother finishes telling us about the dream he had last night. I don't know how many times my mother has used this praising aphorism during the 10 years I've been on this earth. I also feel as though I've heard variations of First Brother's dream many times. A poor farmer carries freshly picked turnips to the market town to barter for salt. He takes a misstep and tumbles down a cliff. This could have ended in a terrible death far from home, the worst thing that can happen to an Aka person. But instead, he lands in the camp of a wealthy salt seller. The salt seller brews tea, the two men start talking, and the coincidence could have been anything. The salt seller will now marry the farmer's daughter, or the farmer's fall protected him from being washed away in a flood. This time, the farmer, was able to trade the salt with the salt seller without having to walk all the way to the market town. It was a good dream with no bad omens, which pleases everyone seated on the floor around the fire pit. As Ama said, 
Every story, every dream, every waking minute of our lives is filled with one fateful coincidence after another. People and animals, leaves and fire and rain, we whirl around each other like handfuls of dried rice kernels being tossed into the sky. A single kernel cannot change its direction. It cannot choose to fly to the right or to the left, nor can it choose where it lands, balanced on a rock and therefore salvageable, or bouncing off that same rock into the mud, becoming instantly useless and valueless. Where they alight is fate, and nothing, no thing anyway, can change their destinies. Wow, we've seen some amazing work that's been ink on paper. Now next though, I'm gonna take you to some really cool animation with the MIA Animation and Conference Festival. So sit back, relax, check it out.
Falan falan falan. Falan falan. Falan falan falan. Falan falan falan. Falan. Thanks for joining us on Art Loft. You can always connect with us on social media, Art Loft SFL. Now, for Art Loft, I'm Jamani Anomaly. And remember, art imitates life. So do what? Live a beautiful life. Peace. Funding for Art Loft is made possible by Friends of Art and Where there is freedom, there is expression. 
the Florida Keys, and Key West. This project is sponsored in part by the State of Florida, Department of State, Division of Cultural Affairs, and the Florida Council on Arts and Culture. 